We're going to be bringing it the roll tonight. We are going to be jumping straight in now to Coastline. Let's see what these teams have got in store for us. Coastline, another one of those maps which really sort of weighs heavily in, uh, in, in the way that the Operator bands go. Yeah, and that is definitely true. Some people say this is a little bit attack-sided. I, uh, I would disagree. Recently, it has been pretty even, pretty 50-50. Uh, as you said, though, it does very much depend on the Operator bands coming through. So we'll see Nip with the first band there. He's going to be the Yin coming out, and Black Dragon's uh, going to be banning out the Glass. So still not seeing any Glass today. No, Glass is going to be a permanent ban, it should seem. We've not seen Glass um, neither this evening, this evening or, or yesterday evening. It's uh, it's just been one of those things that Glass just hasn't really made his way through. But I think what we have seen, we've seen a heck of a lot of uh, Valkyrie banning. Well, oh, no swearing on the stream, please. As uh, we will see the final ban starting to come through here from Nip. It'll be Valkyrie off the scene. So, yeah, that's a pretty common ban on Coastline. You'll see teams like FaZe will heavily abuse the fact that if they have a Valkyrie on Coastline and constantly go for the runouts, Nip are going to ban out the Echo here. So, some pretty standard bans coming out. Um, so, I would say this is still fairly even. And leaving the Maestro on the board here is a little bit questionable from Black Dragons. But... It shouldn't matter too much in the long run because they do have Ash on the board. They do have the Zofia. Those are the operators you're mainly using to get Maestro Cams off the board, and they're pretty effective in doing that. Yeah, with the, uh, the Ash being open there for Iron to jump straight on, he's going to be able to deal with, uh, with any evil eyes that he so wishes. Seeing Kamikaze bringing the Clash, the Clash isn't something that we've seen work too well this evening. Uh, I'd be interested to see where he does play this. He is going to six pick out of that onto a castle, uh, which I would suggest is a much safer bet. Um, but I am also going to switch over onto uh, sort of, I guess it could be seen as maybe Ash 2.0 Zephyr. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a kind of the hybrid of uh, of the original operator Ash. So uh, we're going to see a, bit, a slight bit of a switch there as well. But Zephyr is surely going to be capable of dealing with any castle barricades that she should need to. Definitely. I'm really not sure how I feel about that Maestro Cam that Psycho just put down in the hallway. It gives good vision and, you know, this is a billiards defense. And typically teams will go to VIP, they'll open the wall from VIP and they'll cut off the rotate from billiards and they'll go for an aquarium take. Him pointing down that Maestro Cam means they're going to know when that start to come down. And they do have a pulse on the board that's good nitro from below. But my big concern here is that Mirio made it through the band phase. And not only is Mirio a great operator for this particular map, Julio is an insanely good mirror. Probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe the best mirror in the world. I would say, I got a bit berated for that yesterday. Uh, I would say potentially top, top five, top five mirrors. You know, it's it's an operator that you think of Julio, you think of Mirror, you can remember some of the clutch plays that he's, he's had with that operator. So it's it's really key. And like you say, you don't really ever see a Mirror getting through on coastline anyway. So to see it getting in with, an, with Julio, who's so proficient on the Mirror as well, it really just doesn't seem to make all too much sense to live like that through. They're gonna, gonna have to have some sort of a plan as to how they're gonna deal with that. See there, GD just gonna deploy some X Karos onto one of the uh, the castle barricades. That's why these castle barricades are so great because they just eat up so much utility. And if you've not got players in the or operators in the right location to deal with them, you have to end up using things like X Karos to deal with them. And it just really you know runs down your options when you come in later on into the round. It definitely does, but we're gonna see how it does go down as we move into round number one's action phase. We're still seeing Nip put down reinforcements at this stage. I really don't enjoy that. But we are going to see GDN slowly start to open up stuff. And he's going to open up the billiards wall already. That is really quick movement coming out. Yeah, I really like seeing the wall being opened from the, uh, the skylight like that, or the atrium area in the middle of the courtyard, whichever, whatever you want to call it. Um, it just makes it so uncomfortable for the players to be able to play in the site. And we've also seen the how powerful that little corner can be to deny the plant with a smoke. Um, you know, you can be able to, you know, really keep the keep the push coming out of Aquarium from there for quite some time. But we're going to see an early pick there. GD just managing to pick up the pulse. So pulse. Been, well, Pulse would have probably been providing quite a lot of information on the Heartbeat Scanner and of course having a C4 it would have been fairly crucial if the plant does actually come down at this point. He would be able to uh, to cause some sort of denial for that. Psycho pretty uh, pretty convinced that someone's out there on Blue Curtain but not quite managing to find the head of Panico but he manages to find it there and he is going to be able to pick up that kill. Fort versus Fort moving into the final minute. 
what an insane shot coming out from Psycho, just wide peeking out. He takes down the Thatcher, that's not a massive amount of utility off the board, but it is utility nonetheless. That could affect the push coming through because Maestro Cams are not being dealt with. Billiard's window is not open right now. It's not looking good for Black Dragons, but Iblex will find a kill. There we go, Wag is going to go down, but Psycho is still playing around this mirror. He's still shutting down all of this. Oh my god, that was so aggressive from both teams right now. And Psycho is still holding it down where he can. The book does open up from below. He's going to be able to take out the mirror window. But oh my god, Psycho through the smoke. He takes off Hugzod. Now it's a 3v2. It's actually looking really good for Nip because the diffuser is going down. Oh, but Julia with the Nitro. He takes him down. Diffuser does go down regardless. It's now a 2v1. Iblox is below doing work on the book. Julia trying to move up. The book is just below. He's just doing work here. And he's going to be able to cover the diffuser going down. Ion is still holding down from luggage. Julio not in a great position. He's going to try and stick the plant, but he can't find an angle. Iblax is below, and Julio can't deal with him. And oh my god, how does Julio not go down? But there we go. Ion will peek out luggage. He will go down, and what an insane first round. Oh my god. Black Dragons did a really good job there of getting the plant down and having a good setup post plant to be able to deal with that. The mirror was so crucial, uh, and Psycho playing off it, just managing to control that recoil, literally providing that suppressive fire for so long, and finally managing to find a head through the smoke. Very, very impressive play from him, uh, but ultimately it wasn't enough. The plant went down, um, and Black Dragons were well placed to defend that post plant. And I think Julia had a pretty tall order there if he was uh, if he was going to look to get two kills and get a defuse off. I think a lot of that really just came down to the fact that the pulse went down very, very early and Hugzor, sorry, no, Iblax was able to get in below, just open up everything below. This is the real crux of bringing Mirror on coastline is that while yes, it's very effective and Attackers it does make a lot of sites very viable, coastline is one of those maps that you have a huge amount of vertical play available to you and Mirror really does suffer here from that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good point. Um, it doesn't really matter where you play the mirror, you're always going to be susceptible to that vertical play, like you say. Book is a staple pick for uh, for any coastline attack, so it's uh, no surprise that we're seeing him picked again from Ibox. Ibox did some great work. I really enjoyed how when the, when the plant was down, he just started opening up the entire of that billiards room floor and just made it very very difficult there for Julio to be able to get anything anything going. But we chose, Nip have chosen to go to the same bomb site yet again. I'm not too sure about that decision. I don't think they were too far off. I know we often talk about uh, teams liking to go to a bomb site twice before they kind of, you know, try somewhere else. I just think there's another couple of options really on coastline that they could be going, maybe down to Blue Bar and Sunrise. If you've got the mirror available, that can sometimes be a better site to defend. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Gonna move through into round number two. We see a fairly similar setup coming out from Ninja's Pajamas here. A lot of this does come down to if ninjas can play their pulse better and if they can shut down the book immediately coming through because otherwise they're just going to lose control, they're going to lose map control and they're going to lose those mirrors very, very quickly, exactly what happened last time. Yeah, they're going to need to have some sort of a presence downstairs to be able to deal with Iblax because if he's allowed to operate, and you can see now that he's sat down there droning out Blue Bar, uh, making sure that his, uh, his coast is clear, if you will, to uh, to push on in and, uh, and do some good work down there. We've also got some support drones coming through from Zephyr. Just going to be cooking a grenade now, and that's going to be uh, used to detonate just onto the uh, well, the floor uh, of the of billiards or the ceiling of blue doesn't quite manage it with that one. The throw just manages to hit something else. Um, so he's wasting a little bit of his utility there, but it's caused some decent damage and a little bit of decent disruption. Julio is actually down at this point, and Ion is going to take out the mirror. So mirror no longer going to be allowed to play on. Uh, I believe it was Cool Vibes that uh, that Julio was playing the mirror on there, just peeking on into Hooker deck. As, uh, as Kamikaze now is going to have to start thinking about rotating back to the site um, to make sure that he doesn't leave his team short. Psycho is going to pick up a kill in the meantime from Maestro, and he's going to be taking out the Ash there. Yeah, doing very well indeed with that as we move into a 4v4, but already losing your mirror and losing Julia off the board so early on. That's pretty devastating. The fact that now we've started to lose map control, but there is still the pulse on the board, and he has still got map control downstairs, but Buck is still doing work in blue. Pino has not been able to contest this at all. Bill at Dragons are doing so well on this map so far to just tear them apart. Don't forget, Coastline is their map pick as well, so we're kind of expecting them to be a bit more confident here. 
Yeah, Black Dragons, it's just how they're allowing Eye Blacks to operate relatively freely, but at this point, there's only two Nitros left on the board now, having, well, only one Nitro left on the board now. There would have been three at the start of the round with Julio, so Pino was probably really trying to keep hold of his Nitro there to try and deny any sort of a plant and didn't want to risk his life to, uh, to challenge in the book. Psycho going to go for a run out there and get punished by a Claymore. Eye Blacks going to pick up a kill of his own. Wag trading one out onto Panico, all now down to Wag in these final few seconds. He's only one bullet of health, one versus three. The Diffuser is certainly going to start going down very shortly as we're in the final 20 seconds. Wag's got a big job here. He's got the SMG 11 and the shotgun. There's vertical control from Eye Blacks. GDN going to pick up his third kill of the round, and that's going to be all she wrote. Yeah, Blood Dragons take round number two in a very similar fashion to how they took the first round, but this time they picked Julio immediately. But again, just making all this setup and utility from Nip completely useless with the fact that they're just getting in below so early on. Nip un completely unable to contest that. Maybe I would like to see from them if they go for this defense again, which doesn't look like they're going to do. So following the same pattern that pretty much every other team does, other team does take, sorry, as, uh, yeah, they're actually going to go kitchen service entrance. But I would like to see a little bit more vertical play coming out from Nip. They have the ability to open up themselves and they are going to take the double shotgun here. I see. I think you're right in what you say. That I don't believe that trying Defenders billiards and hooker was the right decision to attack. try it again straight away because they just lost it so convincingly the first time and they didn't do anything to adapt or deal with the way the Black Dragons were pushing it. Um, and it was almost the same story. Black Dragons were allowed to push underneath, get an early pick, um, get some vertical control, and it just makes it so uncomfortable to be on the site there. You can see that Pino is going to invest a little bit of resource upstairs in, uh, in theatre and penthouse. Obviously just trying to hold that area off because, again, the vertical control can be oh so important. I'm surprised we don't see more book bands on coastline. I think it'd, it'd be a little bit of a off pick because you'd be opening, you know, you'd either be opening up a glass or a ying, but I think it, it could really do some good work. It could do some good work indeed. We'll see round number three getting underway. And we'll see exactly how Nip want to take this. They are bringing the dock and I, I like the dock pick here for the bulletproof cam most importantly, but I feel like you just bring the Maestro here and you can have pretty much the same effect. I think the Maestro is more important than the Dark, but it's uh, it, it's all just down to personal preference at the end of the day. Some people really like the MP5, some people not so keen on the Alder, even though it is an absolute beast. Um, and obviously the Stim Pistols on Dark are going to provide just a little bit of comfort if you, uh, if you do need to revive at range. Uh, or, or just boost your teammate up just a little bit. Pino going to be playing over in VIP. I'm trying to get a bit of an idea as to where this push is going to be coming from. He's going to get a mark on somebody over near Hooker Deck. Um, so they're going to be pretty short. This is, you know, they're going to try and push through Hooker, get control of Hooker Deck. Could even be people playing on the roof. Uh, and the roof is always an area that the attackers do love to play. Psycho going to open things up with an important uh, um, opening kill there onto Eye Blacks. Ion going to get one back of his own onto Wag. Ion has taken a lot of damage for his troubles there. Two big, big kills coming out there we've lost the book and we've lost the smoke both very important operators not the kind of operators you want to be losing so early on i am going to get reset there just getting shot through the wall by gdn so he doesn't get killed and uh, i'm going to be back up on 50 percent health yeah they're doing quite well with themselves to just try and get quick control where they do go through round number three not looking too good for nip because they've already lost their smoke and that's a pretty big pick even though black dragons have now you know they've lost their book and that could you Saying, it does affect the vertical play. I was just about to say the Dokubi could have done a really good job there of opening up vertical play on our home with the SMG 12 and putting out smokes and logic bombs, but that's a massive amount of utility that's just gone down as he's going to get picked up for free by Psycho, doing very well for his team there. And now it's a 4v3. Black Dragons are kind of scrambling for a better attack here. They're not able to find it just yet. It looks as though Nip are pretty comfortable on this attack. They're not really peeking too much. They're not overexposing themselves, which isn't something that they need to do at this stage. Like you say, the utility that Black Dragons have got left, it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to push through into the site. That dock will be going down. has really, really scuppered the plans at this point because there's going to be no smokes left to uh, to kind of get in under the cover of. The mirror windows, however, are going to have some x Caros on, but uh, I think there's a nice little mute jammer place there, which is going to make the job just a little bit different. Both those mirrors closed as well, uh, which is always uh, interesting to see. Possibly one going to get open later on um, if uh, if a kill is uh, it could, you know is uh, is an option through on. But at the minute, they're just providing a good amount of intel. Julio's got a good idea. As to 
to where the push is coming from. Psycho picking up a kill onto GDN. Julio getting pushed in the site. Ion getting that kill and Kamikaze trading it straight back out. All now down to Panico as the plant is going down. And I'm not sure that Kamikaze is actually aware of this at this point. So the diffuser has gone down in this situation. And I'm pretty surprised that Panico was let to get it down. But Psycho is not phased one little bit. He's going to find Panico's head, get the diffuse. That's going to be the first round for Ninjas in Pajamas on Coastline. A pretty good attack coming out from Dark Dragons there, but they didn't really achieve their earlier objectives, like to try and get VIP control. That was completely in Nip's favor pretty much the entire round, and maybe wasted mirrors there, although I kind of like that mirror rather than putting mirror on the rotate, because if that gets opened, it doesn't really give anything to the attackers if it gets opened up from above. It can only really give things to defenders. Do you think that the uh, do you think the Black Dragons got a little bit debated there with the bomb site choice? No, I, th I think they probably figured it was going to go somewhere else. Uh, kitchen service entrance is normally a pretty default one to take. Um, it's either that or billiards. So I, I don't think it was a bad choice. I don't think there was any kind of like debate or anything going out there just yet. But Black Dragons definitely were Defender, struggling to deal with the roam game from ninjas, which you know previously they'd done pretty well with. But I think it was more because Ninjas only had one person on the roam here. And I hope either they play vertical play this time here on Billiards, or they play more roamers. Well, they've not brought the castle this time, so their attention could certainly be focused elsewhere. We've got uh, Psycho jumping onto the Legion. Psycho on seven kills, so he's doing his best for his team at the moment. The um, rest of his team on either one or zero kills. So Psycho really coming up clutch at the moment, choosing to, uh, to go onto the Legion. Uh, and hopefully he's going to be able to get some goo mines downstairs, get an idea of where Iblox is going to be pushing on that bug and get that early pick. That early pick last time really contributed quite heavily as to uh, as to where the round ended up going. Yeah, no, it definitely did. Bomb. But we're going to move through into round number four, and we'll see exactly how it's going to go down. As you see, Ninjas of Pajamas still unable to find a defense round on Billiards. Let's see if they can do it this time on their third attempt. But this, as you said, it kind of all just comes down to if Iblax can just get down there and he can just start doing work on the book, because every time he's been able to do that, He's been tearing apart the defense, especially the mirror windows, but there's no Maestro this time. And I think this is because they're, they're trying to get more people in the room. And Psycho playing offers this is a really powerful position for Elysian to play. And a lot of people don't like Elysian Rome, but this can actually work out very, very well for you. Yeah, conservative Legion Rome can be very powerful, especially if he's in a, in a location where he knows he's going to get pushed and he's able to, uh, you know, he's got a player playing off him as well there with, uh, with Kamikaze playing down in, uh, in service. So it's, it's not going to be a bad place for him to be playing, but uh, I think uh, it's, oh, it's actually the pulse, sorry. So it was Pino that was going to get pushed there into servers. Uh, nice push there coming out from Panico. Kills coming through pretty quickly there. And, uh, and Hugzord is going to get the kill onto Psycho. So very quickly that's turned into a four versus two. It was looking really good for Nip at one stage, but you can't argue with that push from Black Dragons. They were just able to get really good crossfires, really good pincer movements onto the defenders that are playing downstairs and easily take them apart all within the first half of the round. So Black Dragons now got a lot of time to play with. They really don't need to rush this. They can take the time, get into some drones and really figure out how they're going to do this. Gan Repel, Hugzord is going to get his head taken off by Julio. Julio making that super aggressive wide peak there and you can't fault him at this stage he really needs to be doing something pretty spectacular to get this man advantage back that's the kill that they need yeah in a 4v2 you just really need to start taking gunfights and Julio will find a pretty good one for himself and that's actually going to be diffused down outside of aquarium as well so that's a really good pink coming out from Julio he's just going to stand behind the shield it looks like he's getting ready to throw a nitro out onto luggage or on the aquarium balcony GDN's drone is going to come through to see what exactly is happening here in this situation. Oh my god, the flashbangs go down, but the ADS catches the boat. Nitro goes out, Wag takes down GDN as he moves all the way in. Wag tries to push up, but does get picked up on the flank by Panico. It's all down to Julio in a 1v1. He will pick up Iblux and just retreat all the way through onto Luggage. He does have control of the Diffuser. Panico doesn't really have time to retreat around. So a few charges will go down, desperately trying to find Julio. He's going to be taking a prone angle, but there we go. Panico finds a much better angle than he does. He takes him down, and Black Dragon stick right number four. Very, very well done from here from Panico, especially. Look at that. I feel, I feel really, really like, I think that, well, what I'm trying to say is that I think Nip was so close to that round 
I think it's so disappointing that they just quite couldn't quite manage to clutch it out. The way that they adapted and the way that they dropped the castle pick, chose a different operator uh, and roamed downstairs, it just really seemed to work well for them. Uh, we're going to see them go down to blue bar now. They, they can't go back up to billiards. It was really close last round, but ultimately they've lost three rounds there now, and that's quite a lot. But, you know, you talked about it earlier about Coastline. It is an attacker-favoured map, so Defender we'll have to see what happens at the, uh, at the halfway point. Down. Yeah, we definitely will. We're going to move through into round number five. Black Dragon's looking very, very good right now, and this is looking insanely attacker sided, but I think Ninjas are defeating themselves at this point. They've just been constantly unable to deal with Eye Blacks down below, and he's been able to tear up the defense, and every single round, defenders have had to move out of positions that they're favorable in into positions where they're getting caught out in crossfires, and uh, it's happened all the time. And then when, when we had a more aggressive run game coming out from Ninjas, they recognized they need to shut down Eye Blacks. They got shut down themselves. They got put into the same crossfire. It's just on a different level this time. And uh, some good, really good trading coming out from Black Dragons. Ninjas, not so much. Yeah, you really can't argue with how Black Dragons are playing as a team. You commented on it earlier, the way they're able to execute these pinches. They're really rooting out the defenders and uh, making it very uncomfortable for them to play. So you, you just can't argue with that. And sometimes on a map like Coastline, it's very difficult to deal with that in any way as a defender um, because there's nowhere really for you to go if, if you're going to uh, you know, give up a certain amount of control to the attackers and they're going to be able to take it and then get a good pinch on you. There's not all too much you're going to be able to do, especially with all the utility that the attackers have at their disposal in terms of flash grenades uh, and the operators that we see Black Dragons bring in here, especially Zafir. Um, you know, Zafir clutching the round up last time. It can just make it can really make the difference. Yeah, it definitely can make the difference indeed. But we are going to see round number five getting underway shortly. These pre fires are going to come out both sides, but Nip are going to be holding down fairly well. But again, I still feel like they're going to come under the same issue. And it's going to be all about if they kill this book or not early on. But I can't see Iblax putting himself into a position where he's going to be able to get picked because he's constantly on the flank watch until he's needed. He's never really making the entry himself. No, Iblax is playing it perfectly. He's, always, he's usually got somebody that's droning for him. He usually does a little bit of drone work of his own. But it seems as though Nip aren't really giving them any option to get in and play vertically because of how well they're contesting um, you know, Sunrise Bar and Upstairs in, the, in Hooker Deck. You can see, oh, nice kill there coming out from Psycho onto Ion. Ash going to lose his life within the first half of the round. So, you know, not too early on, but he's going to find another onto Hook's order as he peeks around the corner as well. Psycho is getting kills for fun through that back door. The grenade's going to come in from Eye Blacks. Great, great grenade. Perfectly timed. That's going to take out Psycho and remove him from that power position. Second grenade, not going to find anybody, but Eye Blacks is there to play. He's opened up the whole wall. He's looking directly through a peak hole and he manages to find the head of Wag. Eye Blacks is going off at this stage. It is three versus three. No, mate, that three versus two as Panico picks up a kill onto Pino. Pino really struggling to get anything going. Panico making that a double and taking out Kamikaze. Once again, we're finding our with Julio as the last defender alive. Iblax has just been reset. The plant is certainly going to go down now. Julio's got a really tough job here. Iblax, he's going to make it a triple. He's going to pick up the final kill of the round. A definitely good round coming out from Iblax. And just look at the way that he's, his positioning came through there. He's playing the refrag role there. Like two people pushed in through the pool entrance and just immediately got shut down by Psycho. But then the nades come out. Then everything starts to come out from Iblax. He starts to push around and he gets multiple frags for his time. Doing very, very well indeed. But I still feel like Iblax put himself in a bit of an aggressive position there. And if the frags hadn't come through from the Zofia as well, that could have been a different story coming out from Nip. I also really liked that angle from Julio where he opened up the floor just a little bit next to the reinforcement and he was holding a very tight angle. But it's actually be Julio himself who swaps through onto the alibi. I actually really like that pick, even though that mirror is very powerful here. It's not working for Nip because there's just this abusive book who's tearing them apart right now and kind of making mirror a little bit useless. It is funny as, you know, we, we speak of the power of mirror and how, how important she is as an operator, but Iblox has done a great job of just really making it quite a non-issue and he's just shutting it down all the time. So. It, it really does sort of ebb and flow as to you know which operators you're actually playing against or which players you're playing against and how they're able to deal with that. And like you say, I black and you know Black Dragons in general have just been able to shut down the mirror totally. So Julio has obviously had enough of uh, of the three armor and he's now going to go for the three speed, see if he can pick up any kills that way. Uh, I'm sure that 
Nip want to pick up another round on defense before they switch on to attack, but they shouldn't be too downbeat because, as we've said, this map can be a little bit attacker favored currently, um, especially with the lineups that they've got available to them today. Yeah, they definitely should be able to go so well, but Psycho, so aggressive coming out from him. And that is very typical of the Latam playstyle, but he is not going to go down for it, but does get very, very lit up already. This is uh, looking interesting so far. This could be the final attack for Black Dragons as we move into round number six, this is action phase. This has been looking very good for them, but I can't help but feel that when ninjas go onto their attack, they're going to do the exact same thing. I think I think that's exactly what's going to happen, um, and and it's just it's just down to the way that the map plays out at the moment. It it really does seem to favour the attackers just a little bit, despite the fact that we've got the mirror. The difference will be is if Black Dragons are are able to effectively deploy that mirror and use it without being sort of compromised in doing so. If they're able to deal with any sort of vertical play, and usually what you do find is that a player like Ibox that is very good at applying vertical pressure as an attacker can usually be very good at sort of dealing with vertical play as a defender as well and shutting down those those vertical plays that the, the, the attackers may bring so it sometimes works in feel like that you can see there he's wasting no time opening some holes in vip he's certainly uh he's sure that somebody's up there and he's put some good good damage there onto kamikaze yeah he has been able to do some very big damage indeed it's kamikaze going to be playing around up to circle this is not looking too good for him so far he's getting pushed out from dj and the drones are going to come out as well Kamikaze still playing very aggressive. It's going to be Julio who picks up the first kill of the round. GDN already out of it. That's the only hard breacher available, which otherwise on coastline normally wouldn't be a big deal. But on this particular attack, onto Penthouse Theatre, that is almost a disaster coming out for Black Dragons. It's, uh, it, is, it is the only objective on the whole map that really Attackers quite relies heavily on a hard user. breach and to lose GDN at any point in the round is going to be a real loss of utility. Julio there proving that his, uh, you know, jumping on the three speed has definitely worked for him as well, just being, by being able to pick up that kill. Um, it's a really important kill to get Panico, going to get Kamikaze. Kamikaze has wasted a hell of a lot of time there in, uh, in VIP, and uh, he'll surely be happy with what he's been able to do so far for his team. As we move into the final 45 seconds of the round, Wag is going to be deploying some smoke canisters into Hall of Fame. Uh, I mean, the hard breach almost not being an issue, seeing as they've opened up the wall into VIP so heavily. Uh, but still got players playing it. Uh, Pino outside in VIP hallway, just keeping a Attack trained eye on uh, the uh, the Hall of Fame, just making Attack sure that no one's able to come through the door. Here. And I quite like that by reinforcing the outside of of uh, VIP, oh. they're able to get some more control. But Wag's going to get a nice kill. He's going to make that a double as he gets three pumps into Panico with the shotgun, but not before he gets a nice flick on the hatch and finds somebody else. Said. Hugzord is going to get him because he does know where he is at that stage, playing tight in the showers, but it's going to make it very difficult now for Black Dragons to get the plan down. Julio going to pick up one, Psycho going to pick up another. Much, much better round there from Ninjas in pyjamas on defense. And that's going to be their last round on defense. So, you know, a good way to finish it, finishing it out on a win there. Yeah, Ninjas definitely doing well to bring it back. That is a 4-2 scoreline, and I think that's what most people would expect from a typical coastline game, a 4-2. But ninjas, it's all up to them to start taking attack rounds here and proving they can be just as dangerous on the attack as black dragons can be. Let's move into round number seven and see exactly how ninjas are going to take their attack half. Uh, what do you think of this lineup? I mean, we've seen what the castle does and I'm really not too keen on it on hooker. I just don't know that it provides... When you bring in operators like Ash and Zafia, it's just so easy to deal with that castle barricade. It, I just don't know that it provides all that much value, but I really like the Ninjas in Pajamas lineup. I think that's going to do them very well. I quite like the Dockby. I think that's a good introduction. Attackers need to locate and defuse yeah, it could be. I can't help but feel that they're bringing the Dockby as the counter here to the Maestro. And I mentioned this a bunch yesterday that she's not really a counter against Maestro because, well, not really a direct one, because when you put that logic bomb down, Dead people can still get on there, on the camera. It doesn't affect people who are dead. So, you know, maybe if you're expecting everyone to be alive at that point when you're putting Logic Bomb down, then yes, it's, it's good. But, you know, we'll see how it does go down. As we'll see, round number seven getting underway. And we will see deployable shields going down in Aquarium. We'll see pretty typical mirror windows going down as well. I think. There's definitely scope to play this bomb out without the mirror. We saw it not really work all too well for, black, for um, sorry, ninjas in pajamas. 
So I'm, it's not that I'm surprised that Hard Blacks has brought the mirror, but I'd certainly think they could have got away without it and maybe switched it out for a lesion. Um, but having said that, if you're going to play the castle, I would prefer to see the lesion anyway. So there's, uh, there's certainly different options there. I'm sure there's good reason as to why they have brought the mirror, because it does make playing off, uh, off Hooker into Billiards a little bit more viable. Uh, and especially with the introduction of the castle barricade, it is just going to slow them down on that push to Aquarium. The, uh, the operator that I'm really interested in this time is, uh, is going to be Pino on Buck. He's struggled to get anything going on the defence. I think he's still sat on zero kills. He's done some really good work tonight on Buck so far, and I'd, I'd like to see how he gets himself in. You can see he's just droning himself in there now. Let's see what destruction he can cause now, because been they've been having it done to them uh, all game so far. Ooh, Cycle, they're going to pick up a nice kill off the curtain onto Hugzord. Kamikaze going to get one onto Iron as well, so straight off the rip it is looking very good Defender for Nip at this stage. Yeah, they're doing work really well to tear apart the defense right now, but just looking at where the runouts should be coming through from Panico, it seems to be a late response, and it seems just like Black Dragons don't really have any intel on what's going on here. Of course, no Valkyrie because she's banned. This is making it very hard, and there's no pulse as well. I think Panico is getting ready to go for a runout onto the deck or onto the purple curtain. But no one's playing around there at all, and this is kind of just wasted space from Panico right now. As looks like the book is going to start getting stuff open from below. Lodger Bomb is going to get deployed. Black Dragons are going to start getting pushed out here slowly but surely. As Utility is starting to slowly get deployed by Ninjas and Pajamas. Looks like they are going to go for an Aquarium take, if you can see. It's where the book is as well. He is in offices right now, and Panico should be able to shut him down. Panico there with a single bullet hole. Doesn't quite manage to land his shots as Book just manages to hit prone in the nick of time. Impact grenade is going to come out and that's probably going to distract Pino a little bit. But Panico, he's not in a great position here because he can't play this all too aggressively. He's going to get the wall bang and take some really good damage away, but doesn't quite manage to find the kill shot. Kamikaze is going to take out Panico as, uh, as he is too distracted on trying to get the kill on the Book. Five versus two now. This is looking really good for Ninjas in Pajamas. All they've got to do now in these final 45 seconds is try and apply a bit more pressure. And that pressure is coming now in the form of a logic bomb call from Dockerby. It's going to make it very difficult on the site. They're going to have to start answering the phones. Or Ninjas in Pajamas are going to have a very good idea of their whereabouts. Psycho going to pick up the kill onto Iblax. Wag going to finish things off with a kill onto GDN. And that's going to be all she wrote for that round. Ninjas in Pajamas picking up another attacking round. Yeah, they're looking pretty good for themselves right now. As we will see... Round number eight, getting underway. Nip finding their first round on attack, and they're definitely setting the precedent here because Black Dragons, they did the exact same thing to ninjas when they were on the attack. So, I think we're seeing a little bit of a pattern here now. But it's going to be all about how ninjas can capitalize on this. That was a very dominant round coming out from them, and I want to say that Black Dragons, again, the same problem that ninjas had, didn't really have the intel that they needed to react appropriately to the attack. And you can see that Panico was kind of wasting a lot of time there down in Sunrise. He could have had a little bit of positioning, um, maybe to try and play a little bit more aggressively rather than playing passively and waiting for runouts to come down. But I'm still not sure, like, because Panico was doing the right thing, but with the wrong insight. I think they were just waiting to, like you say, they were trying to get that run out. They were trying to get that big pick that was going to really shift it into their favor. But ultimately, it didn't quite play out like that. This, this game, well, this map, sorry, is all going to be won and lost on who ends up winning more defensive rounds. Uh, obviously, Nip were able to pick up two. If Nip were able to capitalize on their attack now and, you know, they start to turn the tide, they could they could quite easily run away with this because, as we've seen so far, it has just been so attacker favored up to this point. Yeah, it's definitely Black Dragons to lose. We'll see exactly how they're going to go about doing that. As we see a Penthouse and Theater defense coming out. This is one of the only defenses where I think that this favors the defenders so much and I'm so surprised that it's not taken more on coastline but I think it's more because players aren't used to having and particularly teams when they make their strats they're not used to having a mirror on coast and I think that teams just won't go here because it's such a bad site when you don't have the mirror but when you do it becomes pretty much like a default site. It, it's strange, isn't it? Teams have got so used to preparing for not having a mirror that when the mirror gets thrown into the mix, it sometimes isn't very impactful at all because the team hasn't really got a clear idea of how they want to play it and incorporate it into anything else that they're trying to do in that bomb site as well. And it's almost like things can either get a little bit too default or get a little bit confusing if they're trying to introduce multiple things. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing uh, Black Dragons here just dropping the mirror pick maybe um, and trying to pick somebody else, like we've said. 
I mean, I'm not sure who else they would choose in this scenario. Uh, they could perhaps well, take a mute and try and shut down a little bit of the drone work and aid yeah. the roamers a little bit. Well, Julio picked up the alibi room, and yeah. did pretty well with that. So, wow. Great shot coming up from Ivox already. And as we talk about Julio, Cassis Curse comes through. And Hard Breacher down already. And this is the exact same thing that happened last time, is that the Hard Breacher went down immediately from Black Dragons' attack, and they just fell apart after that, because as we said, this is really only one of the sites, especially when there's a mirror available. Oh my god, Iblox, how does he do it? He just takes him down instantly, Psycho off the board. And that's the top fragger gone from Ninja's pajamas. Now it's a 3v5. Iblox still looking to contest with this Legion T5 SMG. But why picks up one as Panico? It's not all over yet for Ninja's, but they are starting to look pretty bad. Yeah, Ninjas are definitely faltering in that early pick that they suffered uh, from Julio really didn't do them any favours and just I'd like to be allowed to operate like that within the site and to, and, and the players of Nip are still peeking it. It's just a little bit strange. I'd like to see the book getting a little bit further maybe before we start seeing uh, attackers peeking that heavily onto the site because um, it was relatively early on really. I mean, I know we're into the final minute now but ultimately that, that first pick came out very, very early um, and now you can see some smoke grenades are going to be deployed and that's going to make things even harder for Ninjas in Pyjamas to make anything work here. Kamikaze is going to be very wary of, of peeking onto that window as, uh, as Iblax has, uh, has had some success on there earlier, although he is holding a different angle now onto Hall of Fame and it's going to be Hugzord that's going to be waiting to peek out onto the mirror, but Iblax is going to peek as well. He does manage to put some shots in, but doesn't quite manage to make a kill shot happen and I think that the plant could start to go down in a couple of seconds, but no, Pino is going to pick up the kill onto Iblax. That's going to open things up a bit. Hugzord getting the nitro kill as that comes out, moving into the final 14 seconds. GDN picks up the shotgun and he's going to be able to take down the diffuser. That's a big kill at that point. Black Dragons, they're going to come away with that round. Great defense coming up from Blood Dragons, but again, can't help but feel that that was going exactly the same way when Blood Dragons attacked here. That Harbridge goes down really early to a great early peak, and Ibox was just constantly contesting everything there. He did a great job of picking really two really important kills coming out. So, but you know, Harbridge going down, normally that's not the end of the world on Coastline, but on that particular site, it really is. Unfortunately, we are going to have a re host here. So it looks like we are going to just uh, wrap up things here and we're going to be getting back into the game as quickly as possible. Just uh, really weird stuff coming out there from both teams, but Coastline definitely not too comfortable for the attacks from either side here. It's, it's something that we've seen and we've talked about it before. We've talked about, um, you know, maps that, uh, you know, seem to find their own pattern within yeah. the game. Um, and I think that attack is certainly being favoured currently. But I think that something that, we've, something that we've seen there is Penthouse was won on both defensive rounds. Now, I know that we talk about the pick coming out fairly early, which was quite crucial. Yeah. But the way that Ninjas in Pajamas were preparing um, Penthouse, they opened the whole of VIP wall and then reinforced VIP and really held that quite heavily. They were able to delay the book coming underneath to make VIP uncomfortable and use the vertical play. So despite the fact that it's one of the, it's a bomb site that we've seen one both times on defense out of the three that we've only seen, uh, you know, the three defensive rounds that we've seen uh, be successful, they were set up in such totally different ways. And it almost becomes the point of what's what's the deal with what's the deal with Penthouse here? Is it just that it's very difficult to attack, or is it just that the defenders are doing a great job, and it's a bit of a coincidence that it's won you know two out of the three that we've seen so far of the rounds that have gone to the, to uh, to the defenders? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely uh, agree with that. It's been a very weird series so far, but a very intense one. Clearly, these two teams are very evenly matched, and we did see this before when they did come against each other. I was kind of hoping for something very weird to go down, but we've seen some pretty linear attacks coming through so far. There's uh, been a fairly similar strategy from both teams. The attacks have been working for them, though. Mm -hmm. the, you know, so far we've seen, um, we've like like I say, we've only seen three defensive rounds picked up. Yeah. And you know that's quite big. So we've, we've seen five attacking rounds come through. We've seen eight rounds played. I, I'm not sure if it is because of the introduction of the mirror and it's it's seen as such a big distraction at this point that teams are just desperately trying to force it in because it's not very it's not every time that you see the mirror being allowed through the ban phase for coastline and I'm not sure if it's just detracting away from other strategies other things that teams have got prepared and maybe now they're going in a little bit ad hoc because of how powerful the mirror can be but it's not really being utilized to its full potential 
Potentially, potentially. Um, it's it just really weird to see the mirror go through in Coastline and to see it just not be effective at all, really. Um, I want to go back as well and talk about Billiards for a bit, mm -hmm. because there was that mirror that went down on blue that was soft. And you mentioned it's kind of an interesting mirror to do, but it does allow you to just see into couches because that's pretty, a pretty default plant spot and you're getting rid of places we can put down. Mm -hmm. But also, that is one of the only mirrors on that map that can't be picked through vertical play. Yeah, it is, it is a crucial zone. Um, I guess that my argument for it would be that I'd much prefer to see the lesion played. Uh, just a normal impact hole there. Lesions downstairs in Sunrise and in Office to alert you of any sort of, um, you know, book play, any sort of vertical play. Maybe an ADS on Cool Vibe stairs that's just going to help you survive down there a little bit longer, avoid any nades or flashes coming through from um, hook a door. It's different, isn't it? It's, it it yeah. all depends on personal preference. It depends on how everything else is being set up. Um, there's you know there's really no right or wrong answer for anything. Uh, often in Siege, it's all, all down to how it plays out um, under those specific circumstances. So yeah, it, it's a very nice mirror, but I'm not sure how much value it add, it would add compared to like the Legion pick coming through. It, it's interesting you mentioned the Legion pick because it was so essential to stopping shield pushes coming out from Nip. Where is Wyke on the shield now? It, Wag was doing such a great job on Monty that it seems strange that he's not continued that form. Um, we didn't have a big break between the game between Liquid and, and, and this one, so, it, it, you know, the way that he used uh, the Monty on, on Clubhouse just to brute force his way into the site, able to push in, cause a real distraction, allow his teammates to, you know, get the kills onto distracted defenders, or, I mean, most of the time he even shot the defenders himself with his pistol. Um, so he did a great job, and I'm not sure where that push is, is, is now coming from. Um, it is on the side of ninjas now for, for their attack, so there is potential to see it. We have only seen a couple of rounds of attack. Maybe that's something that's going to come uh, if ninjas feel like perhaps uh, a kitchen defense is going to come out. Yeah, potentially, potentially. Um, my main concern here as well, um, something I was looking at, is that there's a lot of drone holes that are coming out from events above. There's actually four of them on coastline uh, on the roof. So I don't think that either team's really playing around those at all. So there's one drone hole that actually goes down the, the vent, that goes down onto Cool Vibe stairs. We had someone actually who was playing there during one of the Billiards defenses. They didn't have an ADS. We had four nades on the board from Nip. And that man did not get naded. And I I feel like just no one's using those. It's just, it's not happening at all. It's, uh, I understand what you're meaning. It can be sometimes quite difficult to get yourself all the way up there. The problem is what you've got to do is you've got to get the intel that someone's playing in one of the spots that can be naded. That's first step. Yeah. Then you've got to deploy the guy that's got the grenades to the roof, which depending on where he is, depending on what he's doing at that point, that can take a little bit of time. He then gets up to the roof, they jump back in the drone, and the drone might not be there anymore. The drone might have got shot that was providing the information. So they're going to have to re-drone it if they don't want to waste the nade or they're just going to risk it anyway and maybe potentially waste I get what you're saying. It's, it's quite situational, it's quite specific. I'd like to see it because we haven't seen tons of nade play so far. We've, yep. we've seen a lot of nades be cooked and thrown at the ceilings. It is effective, it does create decent holes, it does do some you know, damage to players if you do get it in the right spot, but it's so much of a risk. If you don't cook it exactly right and it ends up bouncing off something else and just detonating midair, you've pretty much wasted that, especially as Buck when you can just shoot the floor open anyway. Yeah, it can, it can be a big waste, but what I'm talking about here is so most of the attacks on billiards have come purely through aquarium. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen any variation in that. No one has pushed the balcony. No one has pushed out VIP yet. We haven't really seen anyone open that VIP wall that I was talking about. Everyone's just been concentrating around billiards and aquarium. We've seen someone go up to purple curtain before, but regardless of that, it looks like we are just about to get in, hopefully back into coastline in just a few moments. We have seen a 5-3 scoreline be established so far. Looking uh, pretty good for Black Dragons right now as we move into round number nine. This is looking very interesting. Yeah, it's looking good for Black Dragons, I think. The difference is going to be now how they're able to deal with their defensive rounds. Uh, with Ninjas in Pajamas being on attack, it could be the time for those, to get, for those guys to get some good rounds on the board, get some maybe easier rounds on the board than defense on Coastline, um, and ultimately see if they can come out with a win because this is a best of three series, so they're going to want to make, you know, take every advantage that they can to, uh, to get this first map on the board for themselves. Definitely. So we are going to go through into round number nine. This is looking pretty good so far for Black Dragons because they've managed to find one round on defense. We said that Nip found two rounds on defense. Attackers it's all about really who wins more bomb. defenses here. 
Nip have been looking pretty good. I still think there hasn't really been that much variation in strategy from either side, but thank god. I'm actually going to see the Twitch coming out for the first time. Julio there on the Twitch is, uh, is going to be looking maybe to deal with uh, deal with the mirrors, as uh, as he is a very you know a very experienced mirror player himself. He's going to be more than aware of all the dodgy little angles that Twitch is going to be able to uh, to make away to those mirrors and, uh, and potentially drop the glass. So I've no doubt that's uh, that's probably one of the top things on his agenda for this round. But we are going to be getting underway very shortly. Love to see the Legion pick from Iblax. He's going to be playing upstairs and uh, just making sure that no drones are going to be coming through on from hook deck. Not sure if he's going to go for a bit of an aggressive run out here or if he's just going to be doing a little bit of last second drone hunting and, uh, and then getting the goo mine out there to, uh, to give him a bit of situational you know, awareness if, uh, if anyone is going to be pushing on that angle onto, uh, onto hook deck. Yeah, definitely. So we are going to go through. It is going to be round number nine. It's uh, looking very even across the board, I would say, because if Black Dragons find one more defense, then they've found the same uh, defense rounds that Ninjas in Pajamas did, but the only defense they found so far is Penthouse Theater, which, as you said, has had a 100% success rate so far on defense. I think that's mainly come down to the pick that's come out on the Havana both times, but yeah, it's... <laughs> It's now going to be much more difficult for Black Dragons to move on to different sides. It's still very interesting that Julio's actually picked the Twitch here. You think it's for the mirror windows, but I think he's picking it partly for the gun, honestly. There's been a lot of missed gunfights from ninjas so far. We, we've talked about it last game, Twitch is F2. It's, it is one of the best weapons in the game in terms of recoil, in terms of damage and fire rate. It really does shred through every single defender. Um, so yeah, you, you definitely could be right in that. Maybe it's just a little bit of a bonus that the shock drone is going to be there as well. Psycho going to take a really nice kill there on two eye blacks. Legion out of the picture at about 1 minute and 20 seconds into the round. So there's not going to be all too many goo mines out there. He might have three or four if he is lucky. Uh, but that's going to be quite a large utility loss at this point. Legion, of course, with the impacts as well for any last minute rotations that he may wish to make. So. Bit of a bit of a big loss there for Black Dragons, and that's going to give Ninjas in Pajamas a good chance at, uh, at taking this round. Uh, look at this as well, because it's the book is repelling outside. He has a great opportunity to repel up to the wind uh, to the top and nade cool vibes because there's a smoke playing cool vibes right now. But the GM is going to retreat that down there. But there's exactly opportunities like that that Ninjas cannot afford to miss. It's about having the intel in the moment to to, to act upon that. Uh, and I think that's the, that's the tough bit. But we're going to see a, a straight trade there. Psycho for Panico, both killing each other out. And uh, GDN is playing on the, on, the, on the stairs on Cool Vibes. And you're probably screaming for a grenade to come down. But I don't think that it is going to happen. The Dockerby calls have been raining in. And uh, she's still got one left. Dockerby there just putting some shots down as... Uh, as she was trying to get a kill maybe onto anyone playing over in blue bar but it was a bit difficult to see she's going to chain her calls together here and i'm going to send another one straight away after the first one has finished hugs on just narrowly missing out on uh, i believe it's ion playing in kitchen oh pino going to get punished there by ion so it's going to leave us into a four versus two this is looking very good for ninjas in pajamas at this stage gdn going to get a kill onto wag traded straight out from julio another kill going to come through from kamikaze that's going to be around on the board for ninjas in pajamas yeah and they've been doing very well so far with it coastline is looking very much their map on the attack and i said this i said that i think that nip are just going to turn around on the attack they're going to do the exact same thing that black dragons were just doing and this is definitely looking much more into their favor we're going to go back to billy's defense here for black dragons they are bringing the castle along with them you you're not being a fan of the castle there I, I, I don't know. It's just personal preference, isn't it? I'd like the Legion, but the it, the castle didn't work for them last time. Ninjas in Pajamas managed to win Billiards last time. It was the first round that they attacked. So I think you've got to go through some sort of iteration, some sort of change. Um, I think something that's working really well at the minute is despite the fact that we called for Wag maybe to be going on the shield, I think the Dockerby calls and the Logic Bomb there came in really clutch at the end and just allowed him to be, well, allowed the whole team to be able to push in and take control of the site. Yeah, it does. It does. I still think that the Monty would be a decent play from Wag, just as also just how he was playing it on Clubhouse. He was completely tearing Liquid apart because of it. I mean, even towards the end, they still hadn't caught on to what he was doing, where he unshields, he goes for the hit by, and then he reshields immediately before you can even deal with him. So, Monty's putting out damage from a very safe position, and there's not really a lot you can do against him unless you start a crossfire. That hasn't been happening so far, but the main thing I want to point out here 
This is only one Nitro. There's only three smokes coming up from Black Dragons. They don't really have a lot to deal with a Monty if it did come out. That's got to be something that Nip are, are conscious of, and it's something that they should surely, you know, be be looking at trying to adapt and overcome. Because if they if they acknowledge that there's only one Nitro coming out, surely they can bring them on to the next round. There's no Legion coming out either, so they're all they're all good things to deal with the Monty. If Black Dragons aren't bringing them, bring them on to and give it a go. But ultimately, they don't really need to change all too much because they did win this last round on attack when they attacked this site. So all they've got to do is the same again, and I'm sure you know they'll get a very similar result. Yeah, they should be able to do. And again, this same mirror window going down from Iblex. I still, I still really like this mirror window because it gives you a lot of control. It gives you the same thing you rotate would give because you can open it up and make a vault hole as well because he's put it down right at the very bottom. So there's still, there's still big, big advantage. I can see what you mean about it, but I can't see where else this mirror would even go down, honestly. That's that's one of the things about mirrors. Sometimes it's worthwhile to keep one in your back pocket and not use it because if it gets taken over or gets placed in a, a location where it's not really adding anything, they can sometimes work heavily against your favour. But yeah, I do like the mirrors they're playing out here, and uh, especially the one into Hooker that's looking all the way through into billiards, and uh, it'll have a small angle behind the bomb into Aquarium as well. But the push does seem to be coming from Aquarium, as uh, oh one of the mirror windows is actually going to get opened from below. That's going to be Pino doing some good work on the book making sure that the mirror isn't going to be an option uh, for, for watching any sort of plan that could be looking to go down from the aquarium area but GDN is well placed with uh, with smoke just ready to smoke the corner of the wall and, and deny the default plan spot but he's going to be getting a little bit of pressure from below from Pino as Kamikaze comes in now with some lifelines from Zephyr and maybe looks to make a bit of a push and pick up a kill. Smoke grenades have got to be imminent now as, uh, as he needs, GDM really needs to do something to start slowing this push down. There's still 10 players on the map. Yeah, he also managed to destroy the Maestro Cam that was behind the billiards table as well. So in a pretty good position for himself and Black Dragons have started to lose a lot of their utility. They've lost the mirror window, they've lost the Maestro Cam. They're just gonna have to try and get aggressive off of this to try and stop the push from going down. Ideally, honestly, this is where Monty would be really good for the push. But there we go, Psycho could have picked up a kill regardless of that. Great entry kill coming out from him. That's a mirror off the board, but no more importantly, that's the Nitro gone already. Smokes are going to come down from GDN. This is not looking too good coming out from Black Dragons. They're using utility already, and the Diffuser is going to go down. But Black Dragons do pick up two kills on the way, but it's a 4v3. Diffuser is down. Remember, this is a post-plant situation. Ninjas are just rotating all the way around to try and cover it, but Hookzod, he moves all the way up. He gets Kamikaze. 4v2, the knee is getting prepped. Pino throws it out. That could be a good kill, but no from below. It's going to be Panago who takes him down. It's all down to Wag to try and deny this Diffuser getting destroyed. He's going to push all the way up. He gets one kill. Can he find another? No, he can't find it. He's going to push all the way around into the, into the hallway, but he can't find the kill still. He pulls out the MK14. He's desperately trying to find the kill, but he desperately can't find it. He pushes all the way up, but no! Black Dragons will stick it, and they will disable the Diffuser. They take round number 10, and they put themselves on match point. Oh my god. What an unfortunate post-plant position for Nip to find themselves in there. I'm not sure how, but Pino was outside just ready to throw a nade up into double window which won't, wouldn't have been a bad idea but black dragons really weren't concerned with the diffuser because there was loads of time they knew that all they had to do was set themselves up and you know not really bunch up and do all the right things in that situation when you're kind of trying to not to panic i guess um but yeah pino was outside and then he vaults in and it was it was a really clutch kill from panico downstairs in blue bar because if pino was allowed to get in there and start opening up some floor and maybe add another grenade i'm not sure uh, it could have been a different story, but you really can't fault the defuse there from Black Dragons. Yeah, no, I think that ninjas played the post plant really badly though, because they Defenders all split up immediately. Like, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna completely abandon the defuser like that, then I don't think Zofia should still play Aquarium because she's gonna get traded, and you're still gonna be a man deficit. So potentially could have played that a little bit better. I like that Pino did go below, but you know, Panico just completely outplayed him. He went below as well. He got that pickup and. After that, I just don't see how they recover the round at all. This is a big round for Black Dragons at this stage because we've seen it before. Penthouse and Theatre, this has been won every single time on defense to this point. There's been some nice early picks on hard breaches from both sides. Let's see what they've got in store for us. If Black Dragons win this, it's going to go to our next map, which is, of course, Border. Um, and then we've got the decider as clubhouse. So they're really going to want to make a good show in here. Uh, and if they can pick up this first map on coastline, I think it'll stand them in very good stead. Seems as though Hugzord has uh, managed to find a third mirror window 
to, uh, to to make good use of as a small little uh, spectator bug there. But I like it's going to be just making sure that no one comes into hooker without him knowing about it as he places some goo mines down on his way, rotating back to the site. Black Dragons need to play this very conservatively because the, there has been a couple of rounds going to the attack. This is historically throughout this match been quite a defender favored site. All they need to do is not peek anything. If they don't peek anything, they don't overexpose themselves. You know, let's let you know they need to wait for Nip to start making some mistakes on this push, and then they can capitalise on them because you know Nip is certainly going to be wanting to win this round. They don't want to have to take this two three maps. Uh, neither team do, I'm sure. So let's see what they have in store as we hit around about the two minute mark on uh, what's been probably one of the more slower rounds yet. But I think that's probably just because of how much is at stake on this particular round. Yeah, there is a lot at stake here, in particular ninjas, still. Pretty much playing the exact same lineup they have been bringing. It's not a bad lineup. I still think that just bringing something different here would really just shake stuff up. But a penthouse theater with a mirror and with playing the maestro at 90 could be good. But Black Dragons are a very aggressive lineup here so far, just in terms of positioning coming out. I mean, you've got one playing 90, you've got the Jaeger playing in billiards. You have a very split up, a very aggressive defense so far coming out from Black Dragons. Um, uh, it's nice to see that they've managed to get the VIP wall open there, like you say. It does just provide that angle in, and I think Ivana is the best place to operate to do that. Pino, I'm not sure if Pino's still been struggling for a kill. We did suffer a rehost, so I'm not sure if um, if, there's, if he did get a kill before the rehost, but he's, uh, he's not been having all too great of a game this far. I'm hoping for him to get underneath now and make some holes with Buck and make things very difficult for the defenders remaining on site. Panico, just moving through security and uh, trying to find a kill onto anyone that could be playing downstairs in kitchen. Somebody maybe like Pino who's looking for that vertical play. Panico really, uh, really making sure he's checking all his corners, not going to be caught out by any drones on this late push. He is going to get drone there, and that is going to force him to just move back onto uh, onto the sunroom and through into offices. Docker Call is going to come through, and GDN is going to start deploying his toxic bays. Now it's the final 35 seconds, so pretty good time to use him as the plant is surely imminent as uh, Kamikaze there going to pick up a nice opening kill, uh, which is pretty late in the round to be picking up an opening kill with only 20 or so seconds left on the clock. Another couple of flurry of kills are going to come through there. Two versus three is now going to be the man count. Three in favour of Nip at this stage, but Black Dragons are going to pick up a kill of their own with Ion taking out Wag. The Diffuser does not appear to be in the hands of the attackers, which is going to make things very difficult. Pino is going to pick up a clutch kill there onto GDN. The Diffuser is still not in hand. Leisure Mine in the foot. I don't think Pino's got enough time to do anything about this. This is surely going to go the way of BD. No, the defuse is going to stick. It is going down. Ion there is going to be left with it all to do. Picks up the kill onto Pino. He picks up the second kill onto Psycho. Two headshots back to back. He's going to get the defuse. That's going to be a round for Black Dragons, and that's going to be the first map of Coastline going to Black Dragons. It came down to the wire then in that, and was almost certain that there wasn't enough time for the plant to go down, but it didn't matter anyway, because Ion was there to pick up the pieces, pick up the 2K, get the defuse, bring this to, uh, well, first map going to BD. So very well deserved there. Good scoreline as well, 7-4. Black Dragons did all they needed there, and they really picked it up on defense, and they managed to win rounds on defense, where Ninjas in Pajamas just really weren't able to win much on defense. Yeah, they definitely weren't able to in that penthouse theater right at the end there. They were doing so well with it as well. That's why I don't understand. But Black Dragons will take the first map 1-0. That is their map pick, don't forget.